Yo, what is going on guys? It's Tim Burzins here from Amplify Metabolism, back with more content for you. I miss you, it's been a while, but I'm back. Got some more stuff that I wanna talk about. Today's more about theory, okay? I wanna, I wanna give you a big overarching view about how you should be viewing the health side of the spectrum, where metabolism's high, things are great, um, you know, high testosterone, progesterone, pregnenolone, lots of thyroid hormone, lots of CO2 production. Um, basically, your cells are able to increase their energy needs or energy output based on the amount of food that you're eating so that you don't actually end up gaining weight. You're able to produce all the hormones you need to. That's where life's good. You're living in abundance, all the good stuff. But on the other side of the spectrum, we have the negative stuff. We have high cortisol, high estrogen, high serotonin. We have high prolactin all those hormones that all interact with each other to create the negative stress side. And then on top of that, we have more lactic acid production from glycolytic metabolism rather than CO2 production, which is on the good side. In addition to that, more fatty acid burning, um, lower energy expenditure overall, more inflammation, more cancerous cells, lower insulin sensitivity, a bunch of other stuff, bunch of negative stuff that goes along with that low, low, low metabolism that we don't want as opposed to the high field where everything is great, everything's um, you know, awesome and you, you basically, you love life. So, we're talking about these two, two fields. The important thing that I really wanna get across in this video is the spiral effect. Now, the spiral effect is basically based on the idea that a lot of things in your body, a lot of these systems that control your metabolism are all based on positive feedback loops. Now, a positive feedback loop is basically where something, let's say uh, some chemical reaction happens in your body that chemical reaction creates a byproduct or triggers another reaction that triggers this reaction to happen more. So this reaction's going, creates this, which tells this reaction to go, which creates this, which tells this reaction to go. And basically they're both reinforcing each other together so that you're, each of these are getting accelerated, accelerated, accelerated more and more and more. So both the positive field, the health side of things and the negative side, the stress side, both of these react in those positive feedback loops. So for example, just a quick one, um, CO2 production from the cells happens through oxidative phosphorylation. Um, as you are producing that CO2, it's helping to transport more oxygen into the cell, helping to increase more oxidative phosphorylation. And of course that oxidative, oxidative phosphorylation is creating more CO2 and that more CO2 is bringing in even more oxygen, which creates even more CO2. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's spirals. Okay. It's just, they all, they interact with each other to push your metabolism up higher and higher and higher. Same thing happens on the negative side. So the problem starts to become, how do you balance those two? What, like what happens? Like, obviously we want to be pushing up the, the high side, but a lot of people get stuck in that negative side. And the important thing to realize here is a lot of times people will start doing a lot of this metabolism stuff and not necessarily notice results right away. They might notice some, some things start to, to uptick a little bit, but it's not just like a, it's not just a linear improvement. And the reason is that negative spiral is still in effect. And basically if you're here and it's like, it's continually pushing down, you do something to raise it up, but then it's still, the push is still going down. What you need to do is get all of the factors together so that when it's being pushed down, eventually the positive spiral starts to overcome the negative spiral and starts to help you push up. And then even if you do a stressful thing, it pushes it down, but the tendency is still to be pushed back up with your metabolism because of the positive spiral. Hopefully that analogy makes sense. I know it's a little, it was a little bit crazy and I was doing a lot of crazy hand gestures. But basically the idea is you wanna knock yourself out of the spiral. You wanna do something that's enough of the positive stuff all at once to really knock yourself up. But then in the same sense, if you're in the high metabolism state and you hit yourself hard with a lot of stress, you'll knock it back down. That's usually what happens when people diet for a long time, get super lean or um, eating a lot of polyunsaturated fats. These are all suppressive. And when you combine them all together, it just knocks you down into that lower state. Similarly though, people who take thyroid, who do like bag breathing or some exercises to increase CO2, people who take maybe progesterone, start eating a lot more sugar to increase that oxidative phosphorylation, um, coconut oil to suppress the polyunsaturated fats and make sure that they're not inhibiting mitochondrial function. All these things together can create a nice little kick up into the positive and start that loop going. So in general, when we're looking at the positive and negative side, the negative side, like I said, serotonin, estrogen, prolactin, cortisol, these all cause each other to rise. Um, serotonin is probably the mid, big overarching one because it's the hibernation hormone. A lot of people think it's the happy hormone, but um, there's not a lot of research to support that. SSRIs are very ineffective and actually um, the opposite, the ones that make you take up more serotonin so that there's less in the synaptic vessels. Those actually are really, really good at curing depression. So 
Happy hormone, don't worry about that. It's more like the hibernation hormone. It tells uh, your body that its energy expenditure needs to be dropped. There's not a lot of food around. You wanna go into a cave and sleep off the winter. That's basically what happens. And in fact, serotonin raises in any animal that hibernates. It, you can't go into hibernation without serotonin, which um, is why it might be kind of involved with sleep, but really restful sleep and hibernation are not the same thing. Hibernation um, is a state where the animal will be asleep and they'll actually, fall, or in hibernation, they'll be in hibernation, they'll actually fall asleep and then wake back up into hibernation. So it's not restful. Um, that was probably a longer rant than we needed for that, but it'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in another video because that's a, it's a pretty good topic. Anyway, um, serotonin lowers your energy expenditure and because of that, it decreases the amount of natural metabolism, natural energy production that your cells are able to produce. And so if your cells can only produce this much energy, but they need to produce this much because of stresses in your life, because of exercise, because of anything that's going on where your cells need energy, then this difference, from what it's needed and what it has is made up from stress hormones, the glycolytic metabolism, extra fat burning, stuff like that. So basically what happens is your cortisol goes up, your adrenaline goes up. These both release a lot of fatty, fatty acids to try to make up for that deficit in energy. And the end result is you get all the negative effects from lower metabolism, from uh, too much excitation of the cell without the ability to actually meet it with normal energy production. So because of that, serotonin is raising adrenaline and cortisol. Cortisol and adrenaline are raising estrogen, which is one of the negative stress hormones as well, um, converting more of that powerful testosterone into cortisol and also suppressing progesterone in women because progesterone is kind of like the analog of testosterone for women, um, whereas estrogen is more of the negative stress hormone in any situation. Now, it does have some female effects, and those are important, but only if they're balanced with progesterone if that makes sense. Basically, progesterone is really important to um, protect against the negative effects of estrogen while that has its feminizing effects. It's not really like the female hormone as they typically talk about. Anyway, those are all on the stress side of things. Now on the happy side, the happy, <laughs> the healthy, happy side of things, um, we're looking at thyroid as the main one. Thyroid is the overall regulator of your metabolism, kind of tells you that, hey, things are fine, let's produce a lot of energy, uh, ramp up oxidative phosphorylation, help increase mitochondrial health, and then because of that, CO2 gets ramped up as well. More oxidative phosphorylation, more CO2. And then along with that, your insulin sensitivity improves, improves because your cells are burning primarily glucose. And as we talked about with the Randall cycle, fatty acids compete with glucose to get into the cell. So fatty acids are actually lowering your insulin sensitivity. Uh, whereas if you're burning more carbs, then they're actually you're gonna increase your insulin sensitivity, which makes a lot of sense actually, because you know your body would adapt to whatever kind of fuel you're using and be able to use it more. Yeah, makes sense. But on top of that, thyroid is also important for creating all of the protective steroid hormones. Um, when it's combined with cholesterol and vitamin A in the blood, thyroid helps to create pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is like the mother of all steroid hormones. It can get converted into progesterone, as we talked about, super protective. DHA, which goes to testosterone and DHT and the protective male hormones. So all in all, thyroid is the master regulator, goes along with, with CO2, goes along with the protective steroids progesterone, testosterone, et cetera. So all in all, those are the two sides, the negative and the positive side. That's what we're kind of looking at. Um, the, di the difference between um, you know, thyroid, testosterone, progesterone, CO2, all uh, you know, improved insulin sensitivity, all of those on the positive side of things. But then on the negative side, you know, things like serotonin, estrogen, prolactin, uh, cortisol, higher adre adrenaline, stuff like that. So what we really wanna do is try to you know, do everything we can to knock ourselves up into that higher metabolism, the positive spiral that's happening, not the negative spiral that can happen on, on the stress side of things. So in order to do that, that's why I really recommend kind of going hard with metabolism stuff for a week or two, you know, really try to see if you can push it to the point where you can ramp yourself back up into it. And as you do that, you're going to notice that it's actually easier to maintain the higher metabolic state after you go through that little bump up. Similarly, if you ever go through some stress in your life and it knocks you down into that negative spiral, you're going to feel like it's a lot harder to get your metabolism up. Your temperatures are probably gonna stay um, lowered until you actually take the time to, to ramp them back up. So that is all I have for you today. Hopefully they got you thinking a little bit differently about your health and your hormones and the way that they all work with the positive feedback loops, the spirals, the negative and positive spirals. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Help me get this information to as many people as possible. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below if you wanna hear any other video ideas put those below as well. 
Um, if you are interested in my course, my full course on how to increase your metabolism, you can check it out in the link below uh, there. It's called Ignite Your Metabolism. It's been getting a lot of great feedback so far. I'm pretty stoked about it. And on top of that, if you aren't ready to purchase the, the course, still want to get some more information on boosting your metabolism, I created a metabolism quiz that will tell you where you are, where you are on the spectrum from some pre preliminary symptoms and then give you some next steps, custom next steps on what you need to do. That link is also below, so check that out. Um, subscribe here. And that is enough self-promotion for now. So with that one, I am going to head out. I will talk to you guys soon. Take it easy.